Our first topic is Hardware Abstraction Layer or HAL. The core component of an OS is its kernel. Kernel consists of hardware device drivers which control the hardware at the lowest level. OBSs also provide a set of API libraries or routines or framework to the user at a higher level to use those hardware in an efficient way, thus increasing the productivity of the programmer. Through kernel and APIs, OSS implement hardware abstraction layer HAL to facilitate the uses of computer by the user or programmer. HAL removes the hardships to control the hardware at their lowest levels. HAL also prevents direct access to the hardware by the user or programmer. With the evolution of the OSS, the HAL is growing thicker and creating more restrictions. For the user to directly access the hardware but providing more and more API libraries, routines or framework to increase productivity. Android, routing or iOS, jailbreaking refers to the circumvention like creating a hole through the HAL layer of this hardware as well as software restrictions. Routing or jailbreaking allows the programmer to install third-party software and make direct access to different hardware components of the smartphones and tablets. Look at this, softwares, mainly two kinds of application programs and system programs. In application programs, there are word processors, game programs, spreadsheets, database systems, graphic programs and web browsers. And in the systems programs, there are operating system, networking system, programming, language software, website server and data backup. Next topic is microcontrollers, embedded systems, operations managed behind the scenes by a microcontroller. Microcontroller MCU Integrated electronic computing device that includes three major components on a single chip Microprocessor MPU, memory and input or output ports These are the three major components on a single chip of microcontroller Support devices, timers, AOD converter, serial input or output and the common communication lines is system bus. There is a block diagram CPU versus MCU. And there is the input and output as well as the RAM, storage, registers, where the control unit and ALU, that means arithmetic logic unit, is inserted. There is a block diagram of microcontroller. There is the microprocessor unit MPU and there is the bus topology or bus network where the memory and input or output ports are connected as well as the support devices like timers, AOD converter, serial input or output and other devices. There is a figure of microprocessor based system. At first you can see here at the left there is the microprocessor unit MPU and there is a connector or network which is system bus system and with this all these things are connected like as input port with switches, output port with layers as well as ROM and RW memory. So you can see here some figures or some popular microcontrollers. First one is Intel A051, next one is Microchip Technology PIC, then Atmel AVR, there is, this is another kind of microchip. Next one at the bottom is Texas Instruments MSP430. Next one Texas Instrument ARM MCU. And the last one is ST Micro Microelectronics, which is ARM MCU. Now talk about the input and output. Input devices like switches and key pairs provide binary information to the MPU. And the output devices like layers and LCDs receive binary information from the MPU. Look at this microprocessor versus microcontroller. So, microprocessor, the CPU is stand alone. RAM, ROM, input, output, and timer are separate. And for microcontroller, CPU, RAM, 
ROM, input or output and timer all are on a single chip. So there's the basic difference. In microprocessor, they are separate and in microcontroller, they are all on a single chip. Next one, designer can decide on the amount of ROM, RAM and input or output ports in microprocessor. And in microcontroller, fixed amount of on-chip ROM, RAM or input and output ports. Microprocessor are expensive for applications in which cost, power and space are critical in microcontroller. Microprocessor has versatility and microcontroller is single purpose and control oriented. And microprocessor is general purpose. Then microprocessor needs high processing power and microcontroller needs low processing power as well as microprocessor needs high power consumption and microcontroller needs low power consumption. Microprocessors instruction series focus on processing intensive intensive operations and microcontroller needs bit level operations. Instruction set focus on control and bit level operations. Microprocessors generally works typically 32 or 64 bit and microcontroller generally works typically 8 or 16 bit. In microprocessor typically the pipeline 5 to 20 stages and in microcontroller typically single cycle 2 stage pipeline. So these all things are the main basic difference between microprocessor and microcontroller. There is a figure of typical microprocessor based general purpose architecture. All the parts around the processors are usually required. Look at this, there is the system bars in the middle and of the opposite side there is the input and output serial line, keyboard mouse, disk, network interface, all are connected with the system bus and all of these things are standard interfaces. And on the other hand, there is the CPU, memory and the display with dual port video RAM. This is a typical microcontroller based task specific architecture. However, any of the ports around the microcontroller are optional. And look at the figure, there is the medium speed interactions on the left and on the right there is the low speed interactions. And in the middle there is the microcontroller where the ROM and RAM are situated with connected with input or output interface, custom logic with high speed interactions. Typical microcontroller interfaces, this is a programmer at Mega328. Uh, you can see here, all these things, 1 to 15 and 15 to 28. Next topic, Arduino and introduction. Microcontrollers are notorious for being difficult to program. The goal of Arduino is to create an accessible way for software developers to enter the world of microcontroller programming. Arduino is a microcontroller interface built around an Atmel at Mega processor, coupled with the language and programming environment for creating logic on the chip. Software and hardware. Arduino is open source, both in its software and hardware specification, so that hobbyists can assemble the simplest Arduino modules themselves by hand. More sophisticated pre-assembled Arduino modules can be purchased and are modestly priced. The hardware comes in many format specifications from a small wearable device to larger surface mounted modules. The primary mode of computer connection is via USB, though Bluetooth, serial and Ethernet form factors also exist. The Arduino software is free and open source. The programming platform is based on the popular writing language. The IDE is based on processing, which is a well-known knowledge language among designers and prototypers. Unlike most microcontroller interfaces, Arduino is cross-platform. It can be run on Windows, Linux, and Macintosh OS X. Applications of Arduino. Arduino allows users a simple pathway to create interactive objects that can take input from switches and sensors and control physical outputs like lights, motors, or actuators. Next topic is watchdog timer. In many cases, embedded devices operate in total isolation and are not accessible to an operator. Manually, resetting a device in this scenario when your software hangs is not possible 
Look at this figure. There is a typical watchdog setup where you can see the clock, restart and reset from the processor. And watchdog timer works for this. A watchdog timer is a hardware timing device that triggers a system receipt or similar operation after a designated amount of time has elapsed. To avoid a receipt, an application must periodically reset the watchdog timer before this interval elapses. This is also known as kicking the dog. Many processors and microcontrollers have built-in watchdog circuitry available to the programmer. And this typically consists of a memory mapped counter that triggers the receipt when the counter reaches a predefined value. And last of all, resetting the watchdog timer must be part of the overall design. So there's the ending of this video. That's all for today.